and this is one of the most complicated topic or complicated video that i have ever had to record okay and i'm so grateful to god that i'm able to come and share this with you because god has been laying this in my heart and i've been running away from it all i've been saying is why must it be me why why isn't me why will i be the one to talk about this okay because a lot of people are not talking about these things okay so why will i be the one to talk about it and why not okay and the holy spirit keep bringing the scripture to my mind every time i run away from it okay and i'm gonna read that to you quickly it's in luke chapter 9 verse 26 it says whoever is ashamed of me and my words it said the son of man which is Jesus, will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. And so why will I, why, I, I don't want God to be ashamed of me, okay? I don't want God to be ashamed of me, so why not, okay? And there is a blessing attached to obedience, and that is why I'm here to talk to you guys concerning this word, repentance. That is the word that the Lord has been laying in my heart to come talk about. Jesus began his ministry with the word repentance, okay? He said that time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand and he said repent and believe in the gospel so the ministry of Jesus actually started with the word repentance because it was Jesus that started this word by himself he said repent for the kingdom of God is at hand and God has been laying this message of repentance in my heart and I've been running away from it but not anymore okay you are Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. My name is Serena Ejitoya. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> you know the vibe. So guys, this message, this thing that I want to talk about today is just a message of repentance. Okay, God is calling us the Gen Z's, the, um, what do you call it, the millennial babies. Okay, God is telling us to change from our ways. Okay, God is telling us to repent and come back to him i was going through my bible i was studying my bible and i came across ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 it says let us draw the conclusion to this matter it says fear god keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man another version says fear god keep his commandment for this is the whole essence of man and i love going through um, different versions of the bible and in another version it says for this is the reason why man was created god created man so that man can have a relationship with him okay that means if you're not serving god if you don't keep his commandment if you don't have the fear of god that means you're not fulfilling your purpose the whole essence of man the whole reason why man was created was so that man can have a relationship with god or so that man can have fellowship with god and if you are not doing that you are not fulfilling your real purpose the real purpose of why you were created before you came to this world when god made you before your career before your marriage before your children before any other thing in this life the first thing that god wants you to do for him is that you should serve him serving him is by keeping his commandment serving him is by fearing him serving him is by having a relationship with him now i was reading something when god said to moses go and tell pharaoh to let my people go there was a reason attached to that rescue god said let my people go that they may serve me. That is the whole essence of man. Let my people go that they may serve me. So God created you that you should serve him. So that means if you are not serving God, you are not fulfilling your purpose. You are not fulfilling the purpose of creation. And that is what God wants from you today god is calling you to retrace your step god wants you to come in repentance of your sins god wants you to change your ways now the devil has been so jealous of man the devil has been so envious of man of the inheritance of man of the good things that god has for man and and that was why the devil which is the serpent made sure that adam fell off okay now i want you to know that the devil 
has glorified sin. The devil makes the trend of sin to be so wonderful. The devil makes sin to look so beautiful. And that was what serpent, that is what the serpent was really fighting against. Right from the time in memorial, the devil has been fighting man not to get his glorious destiny. The devil knows that if we turn away from our sins, we are going to enjoy the glorious things that God has for us. Okay. God has God placed a man in the Garden of Eden. The devil was so angry. Why is man enjoying everything? Why has God placed man in this position? Why will man just stand up and be in this beautiful garden? That is what the enemy has been fighting. And that was why he had to tempt man to get man out of the Garden of Eden. And that is why he is still tempting us today. He is still fighting to make sure that we don't come back to God. He's fighting to make sure that we don't serve God. But I want you to know that God is a patient God. That is why you are seeing this video today so that you can change your ways. Just like the children of Sodom and Gomorrah, God actually gave them a lot of time to repent. God was so patient. He waited for them to change, okay? And then he sent Noah. Just like you're seeing this video, God sent Noah to go to every neighborhood, to go to every street, to go to every country, to go to every nation, telling them to change from their ways, telling them to repent, okay? God is a very patient God. He said, I wish that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Guys, if you look at what is happening now it is almost the same thing that happened in that time is it the homosexuality is it the lesbianism is it children looking for fast cash is it teenagers using their parents for rituals using their colleagues using their friends for rituals is it um what else is it selling of human parts or selling organs is it kidnapping guys the word is almost like the time of sodom and gomorrah okay and noah the bible recorded that noah went to every city every nation every country and told them to repent that god was going to destroy the earth okay and the bible recorded that they were laughing at noah they were laughing at noah the how can god destroy the earth that he loves so much because the bible says for God so love the world. He wishes that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. God is not slow as some people will see slowness, but he wishes that all should come to repentance, okay? And the Bible recorded that God gave them so much time, over a thousand and so many years, for them to change their ways. And the Bible recorded that the only person that was spared was Noah. Noah was the one that was preaching righteousness, okay? Now, Noah went back to God and told God, I have told every city, I have gone to every nation. And God instructed Noah to take his family, his daughter, his daughter-in-laws, his son-in-laws, and to take every animal that can recreate, that can procreate and go into the ark. Now the Bible recorded that when Noah entered the ark, God locked the ark and took the key, okay? After God had locked the ark, it started raining. It rained the first day. It rained the first week. It rained for one month. The Bible recorded that for one year it was raining. And then these people that Noah has been begging to repent, what happened? They started climbing trees. They started climbing houses. The, if it was now, they'll be climbing Nepal poles, okay? The ones that have chopper, we'll try to use chopper. The ones that have skyscraper, we'll go. <laughs> will start going into their skyscraper, okay? But that is not the savior. That cannot save you, okay? And guys, you know what? They lost their life and God destroyed the earth. God is not going to destroy the earth again with flood. He said, I will come like a thief in the night. He has already told us that heaven is real and hell is real by using the illustration of the rich man and Lazarus, okay? The rich man said to Lazarus, he said, this place is too hot. If I can have a drop of water, guys, hell is real. There is no death in hell. It is perpetual torment. The person is just there burning and the person is not dying, okay? He said, I will come like a thief in the night. Two will be walking and one will disappear. Mommy and daddy will be there and maybe daddy will disappear. Okay? 
husband and wife will be there having a conversation and one will go okay rapture is real don't be like the children of sodom and gomorrah that are waited until they lost their life okay change your ways repent for the kingdom of god is at hand okay come to jesus he's waiting for you he's knocking at the door of your heart all he needs for you is to open up and accept him okay so you don't lose your soul because the devil is so afraid of your glorious destiny the devil is so afraid of your divine inheritance in christ and that is why he doesn't want you to know the things that god has kept for you because if you repent and you start knowing the things that god has in stock for you you're gonna be the devil it is going to be depopulating the kingdom of darkness and that's not what he wants he is looking for somebody that will continue to bond with him in hell okay he doesn't want to suffer alone because the devil is suffering okay he doesn't want to suffer alone imagine the serpent in the in the garden what does he want what was his mission what will he gain by telling eve to eat of the fruit what will he gain I want you to know that Satan had no benefit in telling Eve to eat of the fruit. But because Satan has seen the glorious destiny of man, Satan has seen the inheritance that God has for man, Satan has seen the bright future that God has for man, and where God has placed man, and he became so envious. And that is why he said, no, I will not let man enjoy this thing. I have to lure man out of this. I have to bring a trend that man will see so beautiful because the devil they so decorated the apple the devil keep making sin to look so beautiful making the trend of sin to look so beautiful making viral things to look so beautiful and that was how he decorated the apple telling eve if you eat of this apple if you do this if you do that i want to ask you a question what was the benefit of serpent in eve eating the apple and then manipulating eve to manipulate her husband which is Adam. The devil had no benefit in doing that. And that is what the devil is doing today, guys. Can't you see? That is what he's doing today. He has no benefit in, in luring you into sin, in wanting you to remain in sin. The devil has no benefit of wanting you to remain in sin, but he doesn't want to suffer alone. He is so happy when he sees children of God going in sin because he's saying to himself, I will not be alone in hellfire. I I won't die alone in hellfire. I won't burn alone. I won't suffer alone, okay? He is just there to deceive you. It says the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come to give you life. Jesus has come to give you life and life in abundance. There is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing that you want from this God that you will not get. He said, if I did not withhold my son Jesus Christ from you, he said, what else will I not give you? What is that thing that you are looking for that God will not give you okay you see there's something the bible says i'm gonna read that to you real quick okay it said therefore if anyone knows the right thing if anyone knows the right thing and fails to do it he said it is accounted unto him for a sin now let it not be counted to you for a sin because you have heard this word and you are living a life that does not please god God does not look at your excuses when he wants to pass his judgment and he loves you so much and that is why he has given you so much time to change okay you have no excuse it is accounted unto a man for a sin when he knoweth the right thing and does not you know that the life you are living does not please God you know that the way you are going does not please God you know that the things that you are doing does not please God as a Gen Z as a millennium child as a century babe okay as a body as a bougie as whatever you know that that life you are living is wrong and you continue in it it is accounted to you for a sin and that is why god has sent this word it is a word for repentance it is a call to repentance he wants you to change your ways repent for the kingdom of god is at hand tomorrow might be too late now i was opportune to go to the hospital with a friend of mine okay for um, evangelism and then what happened I saw this lady this lady all she was doing was she was shouting she was crying she was saying
saying god if you can give me another chance if you can give me another chance if you can give i think that was just too late that was just too late guys this is so painful she was crying she was saying if you can give me another chance if you can give me another she was in pain and this lady was crying if you can give me god if you can give me another chance why will you wait till that time for you to cry for another chance didn't you hear the voices of people that have been saying change your ways didn't you hear the voices of people that have been saying repent okay so i don't know where she was going if she's going to heaven if she's going to hell but why wait till that time to say god if you can give me one more chance why wait till that time to say god if you can just heal me i will change my way why wait till that time and this is what you are hearing today repent for the kingdom of god is at hand that day was her own kingdom of god that came at hand that day there is no way she can come back to rewrite her story guys there is no way that she can come back to rewrite her story. I hope this word blesses you and I hope this word helps you to retrace your step, okay? Tomorrow might be too late. Tomorrow might be too late. Repent, change from your ways. Jesus loves you so much, so, so much, okay? He is so patient with you. Now, thank you so much for watching, okay? I'm gonna say a word of prayer with you, okay? If you wanna rededicate your life to God, uh, if you wanna give your life to God from fresh, from the start, from the beginning, if you wanna be born again, I want you to know that it is just two words, okay? It said, if thou shalt confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, thou shalt be saved. It doesn't require much. It requires just a belief and a confession, okay? So I'm going to pray with you. Just say these words after me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for me. And on the third day, you rose again just to give me a better life, to give me an abundant life. You forgive me my sins. Take over my heart, take over my life, and perfect all that concerns me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you to know that that is all it requires, okay? Confession of the mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus is Lord and thou shalt be saved. I believe that salvation has come to you wherever you are watching from. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay? I want you to know that faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. And when you rededicate your life to God, when you are born again, you have taken upon yourself an enemy. Okay? Now you look for a Bible-believing church and you attend. You keep hearing the word of God and that is where faith comes in, okay? You don't just leave yourself idle and say, oh, I am born again, I am saved. No, it doesn't end there because you know why? The devil is now angry that you are going the right way. The devil is now angry that you want to find out about the things that God has for you, the plans he has for you. Because in darkness, you can't know, because darkness and light has nothing in common, okay? So the moment you give your life to Christ, the devil is so angry. He becomes your enemy, okay? Now he begins to fight you because when you are in the world the devil doesn't really fight you do you know why because you are a part of him okay you you are his child he 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 has no problem because you guys are in the same boat okay he believes that if anything happens to you if you die you are coming to him okay you are not a threat to him okay but the moment you give your life to christ you are a threat to the devil because he knows that maybe through you someone else is going to give their life to christ as well and thereby depopulating the kingdom of darkness okay so look for a bible believing church and attend okay because it says do not forsake the assembly and the gathering of the brethren okay this is where we edify ourselves okay the more you go to the world the more you go to the house of god the more you hear these things the more you build up your faith okay there is a spirit that god has put into man and that is the conscience okay when you go to that place when you go to that church you will know if they are serving god there or not okay thank you so much for watching god bless you and stay very beautiful i will see you in my next video okay Bye. From generation to generation, passed down through every age, there's a story of a Savior whose love.